Hello, this is Rob again. Welcome to Market Master, the Maverick Way. Now we call this the Maverick Way, but it's a lot of people's way to trade. And we basically are big, big adherents to trend following here at Maverick Trading. Now we have all sorts of traders come through our doors. Some have different strategies and that's great. As we've said in other videos, there's a lot of ways to, to pick how to get into stocks. Uh, we're going to talk about what we believe is the best way. And then there's a lot of evidence, a lot of studies that prove that trend trading, that being with the trend is a very, very good way to get an edge in your trading. This is a quote from Ed Sakoda. Sakoda, he is one of the uh, best commodity traders back in the 80s and 90s and actually uh, started uh, he got into developing systems and then he actually took that into the world of business to where he went from being a, tra a trader to basically being a businessman teaching people how to build systems but i love this quote trend following is an exercise in observing and responding to the ever-present moment of now of now what is happening now what is happening right here right now and again hundreds of studies have shown that what has happened in the past is relevant to future performance. Now, the irony is that whenever you hear a commercial from a mutual fund, they're always going to say past performance is not indicative of future results. Now, look, they have to say that because the uh, SEC says they have to. But in the stock market, past performance is indicative of future results. It is, and that's what the studies show. Many people are unfamiliar with exactly what proprietary trading is. Prop trading is when a private firm hires traders like you to trade with their capital. Those traders are paid a percentage of the profits that they generate for the firm. Profitable traders are awarded higher and higher levels of capital to trade so they can take bigger positions and make more money. We've been in business for over 25 years and we're one of the oldest prop firms based in the USA. If you would like to look into being a trader for Maverick, look in the video description below and click on the trader position to apply. So as traders, we all have personality traits. We all have political viewpoints and past experiences. And that means that when we look at information, we are viewing it through our eyes through our biases. And my favorite example of this, oh my gosh, this is, I think this is absolutely hilarious. 2013 to 2015, um, no, even in 2016, not, yeah, 2016, we had a really, really great bull market under President Obama. It was a great bull market. I, I think 2014 was a 30% year and just every year was really, really good. And all of my traders that were Republicans, they fought it. They fought it. They said, hey, this market's gone up too much. It's too far. It's too expensive. There's too much government regulation. There's too much this, too much this. And they fought it. And I came on the trading room every week and said, don't. It's a bull market because I would have conversations with some of them. And their conversations were always negative. And I'm like, look, you've turned into a perma bear. You're permanently bearish. And it's not because of the market. It's because you don't like the political uh, place where America is right now. I said, that's different. As a trader, your job is to be on the right side of the trade. And I would just pound on them and pound on them. Every single week in the trading room, I would come on and be like, hey, look, I don't care if you don't like Obama. It's a bull market. You need to buy stocks. And in 2016, when President Trump won, I literally stopped having that conversation with my Republican traders. And then the conversations I had with my Democratic traders, they were like, oh, the world's going to hell. There's, there's, I'm, the market's going to crash. It's going to tank. And I had to have the same conversation with them. And I'm, I'm showing this as a way that People's political viewpoints and past experiences and personality traits, they completely cover color how you see the market. 
And during Obama's presidency, it was a bull market. During the first three years of Trump, it was a bull market. It was just a bull market. But how you saw the political scene in America affected your trading decisions. That's wrong. That is flat out wrong. So we have a very, very popular saying at Maverick, and we're going to be saying this, and you're going to be hearing us saying this over and over and over again. Trade the market in front of you. Not the one you want or the one you think it should be. Trade the market in front of you. If it's a bull market, be more bullish and bearish. If it's a bear market, be more bearish and bullish. Remember, your job as a trader is to make money. It's not to be intellectually correct. It's not to boost your ego. It's to be profitable. So your job is to be profitable, period. I don't care if it's Obama. I don't care if it's Trump. I don't even care if Hillary Clinton wins. That's your job is to be on the right side. And that's what we call the edge. Where do you get the edge? And in my opinion, being a trend trader is the best and most simple way to get an edge. So I'm going to spend just a little bit of time here to go through some studies. I highly recommend you go and research this yourself. This was something that it was very difficult for me to do. And let me tell you why I really struggle with this. I am not a trend follower. My personality is if everyone goes right, I go left. If there's a band I like and then all of a sudden they get popular, I don't like them anymore. I know that's pretty lame, but that's my personality. That's how I am. I'm more of a pessimist than an optimist. And so when I took that into the market and I saw a stock that went from 50 to 100, I thought, ugh, I'm not buying that one. I'm not going to be the idiot that buys it after just already run 100%. I'm not going to be that idiot like all those other idiots that are buying it here. I'm going to buy the stock that in a bull market was 50 and has gone down to 40. Now that's a deal. That's a deal. And at the old Maverick office back in the late 90s, I sat next to a, a trader named Matt, and he was always buying those stocks. He was buying the ones that went from 50 to 100. And I'm like, man, this guy's dumb. This guy's so dumb. But you know what? His P&L by the end of the week was always higher than mine. And pretty soon I started talking to him. I was like, hey, uh, yeah, let, me, let me ask you some questions. And um, it, it took a while for me to change that part of my personality. But I started to realize if you are in this business to be profitable, the only way a stock can go up is if there's more people buying than selling. That's the only reason stocks go up in value. So if I want to be long a stock, I'm just trying to find a stock that has more buyers than sellers. Because that's the key. The key is supply and demand. It's not what they product they make. It's not who their CEO is. It's not even where it is in the chart at the moment. Yes, it is, but we'll, we'll talk about that. But it's, it's buying a stock that is trendy. Think about that. You need to buy a trendy stock in order for it to go up. You have to be trendy. And a trader is the biggest trendy person there could possibly be. You're trying to find the stock with the largest buy and sell imbalance. You're trying to find the one that all the quote unquote idiots are jumping into. That was hard. That was hard for me to swallow. It was hard for me to swallow. So I always like to go through a little bit of this and just go through proof because for me and my personality, if it's proven to me, if it's proven to me, I can get on board. I'm a skeptic. Um, <laughs> my wife knows. Uh, I fact check everyone. I fact check her. She'll say something to me and she'll see me pull my phone out of my pocket. and She's like, are you Google searching me? Are you, are you fact checking me? And I'm like, yes. And she's like, what, you don't think I'm telling you the truth? I said, no, no. I fully believe that you believe you're telling the truth. I just don't know if you're right. <laughs> uh, advice to those of you that are married or going to get married. Don't do that. Not do that in your spare time. And then if 
if they are wrong, just keep it to yourself. Word of advice. It's a good word of advice there. All right, so again, I need to see proof. So let's go over just a couple of studies. Again, we have some links to some of these studies. This is one of the ones we have links to, but I, again, I highly challenge you. Go out on your own. Go to Google or, or go to Bing if you still use Bing. That's cool. Um, and search in, you know, trend trading proof or trend trading following proof um, or trend trading studies. So this is one that's really cool. So um, they studied all stocks. And they basically broke down these stocks into 10 groups. So um, the top group was the top 10% of performing stocks. So they called that one P1. And then the bottom 10% of stocks was P10. And they actually basically said, okay, if we break these out and we were to buy the P1 stocks, based on their past six months of performance, how well would we have done? And they basically did this every single month in a rolling six month period, and they did it for 33 years. And here's what they came up with. Uh, they basically came up with the top 10% of stocks beat the bottom 10% of stocks by 123 basis points. So by 1.23%. The top 10% of stocks were positive 66% of the time over the next six months. So if you just bought one of those top 10% stocks over six months and held it for six months, two thirds, you, you, you just gave yourself a really nice edge. Now here's one of the really cool things. And when you talk about this every December, um, I want you to take a look at, there is a statistical aberration on this. So February through December, it's money. It's just money. It is just, it's even better. So 69% of the time, the top 10% were positive. And the, the profit factors got even better. But there was one month, January, where this was not true. And we call this the January effect. And the January effect is where the best performers at the end of the year, they tend to underperform in January. Why? Tax selling. So if you've got a big gain and you want to sell it in December, if you sell it in December, you have to pay taxes in a couple of months. If you sell it in January, you don't have to pay taxes for 15 months. So what you do, and then if you have a loser, if you have a loser and you want to get a tax write-off for it, you have to sell it in December. And because of the wash sale rule, you can buy it back in January. So what happens is in the month of January, you usually get the top 10% underperform and the bottom 10% outperform. And we talk about that in the trading room every single year. Some years it happens, some years it doesn't. This year it did not happen. Um, but over time, it is a definitely a seasonality factor here. But this study is great. It shows you that the best performing stocks did better in the future. And that is basically trend. What is something done in the past? So here's a little rule of thumb here. Um, and we talked about this in the Market Foundations course, how, how interconnected everything is in the stock market now. Um, when I started out, you could do bottom-up, bottom-up trading, where you just went and looked at a stock because stocks did move on their own. There weren't ETFs. There were limited mutual funds. There was really no algorith algorithmic trading. It was people picking stocks. Now people are trading ETFs. It's estimated that 40% of the volume in the stock market is now due to ETFs. So no one is buying individual stocks. They're buying baskets. That's why they all move together. So when someone sells the financial basket, all the financials go down. So the correlations are getting really, really strong here. So in bullish markets, 64% of stocks move higher on average. In bearish markets, 72% of stocks move lower. So right here, again, we're talking about edge. We're talking about getting edges. How do we add edges into our trading? Being on the right side of the trend is really, I think, the best and easiest way. Have you been trading in the markets for at least two years? Are you starting to see some decent progress? Is that progress so small because of your limited account size? Maverick Trading is a prop firm that provides capital to profitable traders. You trade a minimum $25,000 account and keep 70 to 80% of the profits. 
After two, consecutive profitable months, you move to a $50,000 account. As you keep progressing, you will be able to trade six and seven figure accounts. To learn more about trading for Maverick Trading, either click on the apply card in the top left, click apply at the end screen or click the link in the description to watch our recruiting video that explains more about Maverick and prop trading. If you like what you see, apply for a position and meet with our recruiters. Are you our next trader? We've done a couple studies at Maverick here. Uh, thank you to Joe B for helping us out. He's our uh, data cruncher here. Um, but we had a couple of uh, questions come up once. And I, I remember this was at one of our summits. And the market had just gone up 7%. And we were doing the trading room live at one of our summits. And, and people were very hesitant about buying after the market went up 7%. And I said, oh, look, I agree with you. I agree with everything you're saying logically. It's just I've been around long enough to know that you should buy. And so we actually did a study, and uh, Joe went and looked back, and again, he's a data cruncher. And we basically said, what is the odds of buying a stock and holding it for four weeks after the market has already run 7%? And if you did that anywhere in history over the last, I think it was the last 25, 30 years, Anytime the market had gone up 7%, if you bought stocks and held for four weeks, these were your numbers. 60% of the time, you won. And the ones you won on, you won 1.34 points. 41% of the time, it would loss, and it lost one point. So again, that has an edge right there in it, showing you that if the markets run up 7%, that's a great time to be bullish. Again, your mind and your personality is going to tell you, ooh, it's gone too high, it's gone too far. No, it says this is a great time. Here was another premise we had, uh, and it was about earnings. And uh, so I told Joe, this is what I want you to research here. Because um, I, I thought to myself, does the trend going into an earnings report have any significance? So we did a pretty simple study here. It was just if the stock was above the 50-day moving average, we classify that as a rising stock. And if the stock was below the 50 period moving average, then we call that a falling stock. So we, we simulated if you bought the stock at 359 before earnings, and then you sold it at 931. That was, that was our premise. Was there an edge to be had? And the answer is yes. And the answer was 55% win-loss, 1.28 profit factor. Here's what we found, though. When we broke it out, um, the stocks under a 50-period moving average, that was where the real edge was. I want to say that the win-loss went up to 59%, and the profit factor went up to like 1.7%. So basically, weak stocks going into an earning report tend to have a lot worse outcomes. So that was where the real edge was in that study. I could sit here, go after study, study. I want you to go and look at studies. But this right here, putting the trend in your favor, that is a really simple, easy edge. And we've talked about this in Market Foundations. We're going to talk about it again. Buy the strong, short the weak. Buy the strong, sell the weak. That is the best way to get an edge in this business. Again, we're going to be talking next about trend identification, how to really quantify exactly what a trend is and when it is happening and when it ends. But I just wanted to get everyone on board for, okay, you know what? If, if Rob hasn't proved it to me or if I didn't already know it, I don't believe this guy. I'm going to go out and do my own research. Uh, please do. In the end, I don't care if you believe me. I don't care if you go to your room research. I don't care if you already knew it. Um, I just want you to get on board with, oh, this is the, the easier way to trade than doing counter trend stuff. So go, go figure it out for yourself. Again, don't believe me. Please don't believe everything I say. Go, go fact check me.
You should do it. Look, I do it to my wife. You should do it to me for sure. For sure. Understand that you are flawed. You are biased. Ah, oh, you are biased. And the way you see the world is not true. I know. Now I'm crossing the line. Getting in your face. But I'm telling you, the way you're seeing things is not necessarily the truth. It's just your opinion. You're going to hear us talk on Sunday night about what, what I call cocktail talk. Cocktail talk is when you're talking about something in the markets that is best when you're sitting around with your buddies having a drink. Cocktail talk. Like, what is the effect of, you know, the president's decision on taxes on stocks? That's cocktail talk. That's cocktail talk. That's, a, that's, that's fun to sit around and talk about with your buddies. But that should have no basis in your trades. Your trade should be built 100% on where supply and demand, where's the odds, where's it going. What the president said or didn't say about taxes is irrelevant to your trading. It's irrelevant. Your trading is all technically based. Trade the market in front of you. Trade the market in front of you. Not the one you want, not the one you think it should be. Trade the one in front of you. This will keep you in the best position to be profitable as a trader. All right. Thanks for joining me, everyone.